they don't want robots that get a 4.0 GPA and a 525 on the MCAT. They want people who are going to care about helping other people. And you need to know science in order to truly help people with their health. So that's why numbers are important, but they're not everything. I am living proof that your grades do not make or break your medical school application. Hi everyone, my name is Daniela and I am an incoming medical student at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. It's still crazy to say that because a year ago today, if you had asked me, I would have been grateful to just get into any medical school. I really didn't believe in myself because of my lower GPA and it's really surreal to be saying that I'm going to go to Johns Hopkins for medical school. So this is not a guarantee that if you do what I did that you're going to get into medical school or that you're going to get into Hopkins. This is just my experiences and hopefully I'll inspire some of you to go for it and believe in yourselves. You know, this process is a, is a really holistic one. They see you as a whole applicant, a person with experiences and motivations and struggles and failures, success. There's so many things that go into the development of a physician. So my GPA for college was a 3.44 cumulative GPA. My BCPM GPA, which is the biology, computation, engineering courses, uh, was a 3.32, so even lower. <laughs> and um, the average incoming medical student has about a 3.7, 3.8, somewhere around there, GPA from college. So I was feeling quite discouraged. I was quite below that threshold. But um, so yeah, I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my MCAT score was a 514. That's one of the things that I think really made up for my GPA and uh, as well as my upward trend. So my first year as an undergrad student, I had a 3.04 cumulative GPA, so basically a 3.0. My last two years, I had a 3.89 and then a 3.95 uh, GPA respectively. So yeah, very, very marked improvement. The other big thing with the grade improvement was that my last two years were my upper level biology courses for my major, which was molecular cellular biology. So I had arguably harder classes my last two years, but I was still able to improve my GPA the way that I did. Those classes are, for example, cancer biology. I had a class on immunology. I had a class on stem cell research. I had a class on reproductive physiology. Classes that are arguably more relevant to medical school in the first place. So the fact that I did really, really well in those courses my last two years, I think made a really big case for uh, my ability to keep up with med school courses. So the first thing that I would say to focus on once you start your applications is the academic difficulties essay, which is an essay that most schools include in their secondary prompts, which is just a chance to explain any academic issues that you've had. So I really took advantage of that. Um, just make sure that you know you don't make it a sob story, you don't make it oh, woe is me, I'm terrible at school, and this was a really sad time, feel bad for me, pity pity, okay? This is not a pity party. Just make it an essay about the lessons that you learned from this. Be insightful and reflective about why you performed the way that you did, and then what measurable steps did you take to overcome these issues? Kind of brief overview. I came from an underfunded public school. I had never had any lab courses before, was really unfamiliar with the more advanced science topics that I was learning in college my first semester. I decided to overload my schedule with physics with lab, chemistry with lab, calculus, French, all these classes that were just honestly quite challenging and I didn't really have much experience in any of these classes at all. I had never taken physics before. The second thing I would say is that I didn't know my study methods. I had joined a dance team during college. I love dancing. I've always been a dancer. The moment that I failed my first chemistry exam, I quit all of my extracurriculars. I said, I need to lock myself in the library basement and study until two in the morning by myself. Surprise, surprise, I actually ended up doing worse. <laughs> I was in a terrible mental health state by depriving myself of all social interaction and things that made me happy outside of school. And uh, that was just not the correct study method for me personally. And then lastly, I didn't know how and when to ask for help. I have always been very independent. I'm a first generation immigrant. I had to figure everything out by myself. And I said, well, if I've got, gotten myself this far, 
I can clearly do this on my own, right? That's kind of the way that you should structure these essays. It's not a sob story, it's not a pity party. And so rather than regret failures, I'm really grateful that I went through that in order to learn the value of asking for help, understanding my own study methods, and really maturing enough to realize that it's how you respond to adversity. I think that my MCAT score really overshadowed my GPA. And I think that's one of the things that are in your control. You can really prepare for the MCAT and say, this is my chance to redeem myself. I studied nine hours a day for three months and made sure that I did everything in my power to do well on that exam. I didn't want any stone to be left unturned in my goal of getting into medical school and compensating for my lower GPA. So I started my research right before starting my junior year. I was still really struggling academically. I was not familiar with research or with the concepts that we were studying in the lab, but I really made a connection with my mentor in the lab and he helped me believe in myself. So before we even started the project, he said, all right, so let's apply for some grants. You know, you should go for it. And I said, well, you know, I've never done research before. I'm probably not going to get it. Paying for this grant was probably the hardest step in my entire research journey because it's the first step that I took to get myself out of that rut, right? So I was performing negatively academically. I was already in a place where I didn't believe in myself. But once I just went ahead and did it, I full sent it. I got the grant and I gained confidence in myself. In gaining that confidence, you perform better. You actually manifest that for yourself. Because once you believe in yourself, your abilities reflect that belief. And then it just reflects back on you. You keep doing better and better and better, gaining more and more confidence. And it just does this positive feedback loop of success and happiness and good outcomes. I think that was the key moment if I had to pinpoint in my undergraduate career where everything turned around for me. So once I felt like I had a handle on the whole pre-med thing, I went ahead and started mentoring other pre-med students at Hopkins. So that's just something I naturally do. I once I figure out the ropes even a little bit, I make sure that I rush to go and help the people doing it right after me, just to help them avoid making the same mistakes that I made. I've always done that as a child growing up. I had to translate for my parents growing up and help them navigate the immigration process. And then I went and mentored high school students as well during the college application process. And then now I'm doing this and I'm trying to help other pre-meds apply to medical school. So I think that's something else in my application that really showed that um, I had it kind of figured out a little bit just because I had that position of mentoring other pre-med students. With my research, I gained a very, very valuable mentor and that really turned a lot of things around for me. And I think another way of ensuring that you have a mentor is to shadow or have other clinical experiences. Just surround yourself with people that you look up to and that are doing what you want to be doing. Um, and that's just the law of attraction as well as actual resources that they can provide for you and quality valuable guidance aside from the fact that obviously that's a wonderful letter of recommendation for your application the next thing that i think really helped in my application was that i pre-wrote all of my secondary essays i had it all prepared the moment that the application opened i submitted it in a timely manner no waiting around i worked very very hard on them do not slack off, okay? Because your essays truly, truly are a chance to redeem yourself if you have slightly lower numbers. The general themes of all of my essays, they really, really highlighted my resilience. Um, I had a lot of diverse experiences. I'm a dancer. Um, I have a unique story growing up. I had a very interesting motivation for why I wanted to pursue medicine. Really highlighted all of the qualities that would make me a great physician. And honestly, made everyone forget that my GPA was what it was. Once you have an interview, your GPA is not going to break your application. It's a chance for you to show them that you are a real human behind that piece of paper with real experiences. And honestly, that you're just 
normal, okay? If they ask you about your grades, prepare just a little bit, a few key points to hit. Own your mistakes, reflect on why you think that you performed badly academically, and what measurable steps that you took in order to overcome that and improve. The interview is just a chance for your personality to shine, um, smile, make a joke if it's appropriate, you know. It's really a conversation for them to understand who you are beyond your statistics and beyond what's on that piece of paper. The time that I took after medical school was huge, I think, in improving my application. I did research for a year, and then the second year, I did two different medical assistant jobs, um, one in dermatology and the other one in primary care. And all of these experiences gave me so much insight and perspective into what it's actually like to practice medicine and how I want to practice medicine. At the end of the day, there's not one thing that got me into medical school. It was definitely a combination of my life experiences, resilience, my grit, my passion. There's just so much personality in my application. I made sure that I didn't leave any stone unturned. I made sure the MCAT was going to be an asset for me to compensate for that lower GPA. My interview was a huge, huge huge, huge plus for me. Definitely made a great impression. 95% of the application is things that you can control outside of your GPA. So just do everything in your power, gain all the experiences that you need to gain, take that gap year, take those two, three, four gap years, whatever you need to take in order to grow and mature enough to really define your why medicine and overshadow any potential detriment in the numbers of your application, whether it's your MCAT or your GPA or even both. I was just grateful to get into any medical school. At the end of the day, I want to become a doctor to help people. I don't want to become a doctor to be a Hopkins doctor or a Harvard doctor. Like that wasn't my goal. It wasn't my goal to get into Hopkins. It was my goal to get into medical school. Physicians are people after all, right? They don't want robots that get a 4.0 GPA and a 525 on the MCAT. They want people who are going to care about helping other people. And you need to know science in order to truly help people with their health. So that's why numbers are important, but they're not everything. I believe in you and you got this, okay?